there's enemies present and encounter hey everyone imminent. welcome to my uh, attachments and uh, stances tutorial uh, this is in regards to a lot of you have been asking and how to so I'm gonna show you how exactly we're gonna be or I'm gonna be showing you how uh, the best way to use your stances and attachments in regards to aiming and firing as it does affect how you play greatly now if we take a look at I have everybody standing here and obviously we have stationary targets it's the best way to test it out now Reaper in this case he is a sniper expert trait so obviously he's gonna have uh, better accuracy in regards to using snipers so with no attachments you can see I have the sniper and if I move the sniper towards I'm using the G82 so if I use the sniper towards his chest it tells me certain to hit with uh, expected damage which isn't really important now but the time to aim takes four seconds and he is certain to hit with the sniper in the torso and in the head he's likely to hit of course with more damage because it's the head and the same amount of time 4.04 .04 seconds now because <clears throat> he's the sniper expert he's likely to hit here and he's certain to hit in the chest now if we put on the rifle he's also a rifle expert so let's put on something that he's not good with for example if we put on the shotgun he's not a shotgun expert so he's likely to hit in the chest and he's unlikely to hit in the head of course uh, the range is the issue the range also counts on how likely you are to hit the person so it's really bad to compare what different types of guns and how likely they are to hit like what's the expected chance to hit him okay so the best way in regards to comparison is if you use the same gun with different attachments and stances so let's move back to our sniper he's currently where is he he's currently lying down he's in the prone stance now we make him stand up he's standing up same target if we look at our target now he's unlikely to hit in the torso and unlikely to hit in the head and impossible to hit the legs and now he's he's on the running stance let's put him on the crouch stance he's high chance to hit in the torso now likely to hit in the head and impossible to hit I in the legs see you. okay and now let's make him proning lying down he is certain to hit in the torso, likely to hit in the head, and uh, impossible to hit in the legs. The legs are probably impossible because there's a fence, so he can't really target the actual legs. Now, in uh, regards to the attachments, as you can see, without the attachments in the torso, it's uh, certain to hit, and 4.4 seconds. In the head, it's likely to hit, and 4.4 seconds. We shall start off with, give me a second, let me just pull up my... Uh, my There's actual present an encounter is imminent my actual uh, guide that I made I need to pull up the stats okay here we go so the 12x scope which is uh, the best one it gives me uh, what is in here 35 accuracy we will not start with that we will start off with the reflex shot okay now the reflex shot adds I believe I'm not sure if it's 25 or 15 hold on let us test it out forget that here we have 4.4 seconds and 4.4 seconds both cases let's put on the reflex shot we will have now 3.4 seconds to the torso 3.4 seconds to the torso so the reflex shot reduces the time you need to aim and let's put on the holographic sight you have 3.3 seconds so yes so it means the EOTech scope is uh, I believe higher is better so the EOTech scope is uh, the holographic and uh, the red dot is the reflex sight uh, I'm I'm not sure in regards to the names because they named it like this in the actual uh, source code so I hope I got it right both cases uh, the reflex sight reduces uh, the amount of time you need to shoot by a little and of course the holographic reduces the amount of time you need to shoot by uh, just that little bit more uh, why you're saying this is important of course if you get the first shot off he can't shoot you back because again he has to re-aim, uh, refocus and shoot again. So it's key to get the first shot off. So in regards to the sniper, if I want to shoot faster, I can reduce my time from 4.4 to 3.4, 3.44, or I can reduce it even further with the holographic sight to 3.03. These attachments only affect the time it takes to shoot. That meaning the reflex sight and the holographic sight only reduces the amount of time you require to make your shot holographic side is always better 
Now let's move to the scopes. Obviously the 4x scope is only now adding accuracy. That being you have 25 accuracy points added with the 4x scope and you have 35 accuracy points added with the 12x telescope. Again, same thing. Let's remove the scope in regards to time. We don't want to reduce time to aim. Now we want to make it more accurate. See, the head now is likely to hit. If I put the 4x scope, it should change. No, high, ch high chance to hit. Now it's high chance to hit, sort of. High chance to hit in the head, likely to hit. High chance to hit is still sort of in the middle. But if we put on the 12x scope, then we aim at the head. It's a high chance to hit more. It stays on the high chance to hit more. As you can see, your accuracy increases. It means the chance to hit also increases. Obviously more with the 12x scope. And obviously slightly less. Uh, 25 points for the accuracy in regards to the 4x. And uh, uh, what is it? 35 accuracy in regards to the 12x scope. So, and for example... I know for Reaper, in this case, he, he's both cases a good shot. So I'm not interested in increasing his accuracy since he's pretty good at that anyway. So what I'm going to probably increase on him is the time he takes to aim. I reduce the amount of shots he can shoot from, hold on a second, let's remove the scope, from being 4.04 seconds without anything to, if I put on the holographic side, that being the highest attachment that reduces time to aim, to 3.03 that's a 25 percent increase it means i can shoot an additional bullet every second every actually three seconds so in a minute let's say if you have hold on a second let's calculate that out in a minute i'm really getting into detail so for all you people that really like to juice it up and crunch it down to numbers hold on let me get my calculator on my iphone where the hell is it here we go so we got 60 seconds in a minute divided by hold on let's go back no with nothing divided by uh, 4.04 divided by 4.04 hold on hold on 60 divided by 4 point god damn it 60 divided by 4 okay let's paint the town red with the enemy's blood point zero four and my calculator is messing about so, hold on a second, be right back. So if we want to count how many bullets per minute he can shoot with the G, what is it called again, the G82, per minute without any attachments, he can shoot Contact. only 14.85 bullets per minute. Obviously he can't shoot 0.85 of a bullet, so he can shoot 14 bullets a minute without any attachments. But if I put on the holographic scope, which reduces the time down to... 3.03 seconds it means now technically he can shoot 19.8 bullets a minute again the point eight you can count so 19 bullets so additionally from 19 to from 14 to 19 he can shoot five additional bullets a minute so obviously for me in this case i'd prefer since he's accurate enough i need him to shoot more bullets as fast as he can i need him to shoot more often i need him to take out the enemies as fast as possible so in this case i would give reaper obviously the holographic a sight if I have it obviously in the start if I don't get it you know I'd probably stick to the scope but the moment I get a reflex sight or a holographic sight I'd probably give him the holographic or reflex sight to reduce the time and then later on obviously I'd give him the holographic sight since holographic sight reduces more time in this case now he's also a rifle expert so let's take a look at the rifle again the rifle itself hold on let's unpause it rifle itself he's on the ground so again it's likely to hit this time it's not certain to hit and on the head it's unlikely to hit and he's prone he's proning and the time is 0.92 seconds you see how much faster the rifle is in comparison to the actual sniper uh, expect the damage obviously you have higher damage when you aim to the head so that's just standard information you know obviously you have higher damage with the sniper in hitting obviously because the caliber is much uh, bigger and it pierces the armor so most probably he has armor on this guy as you can see expected damage is substantially lower or in regards that I'm using a different caliber so it automatically calculates in regards to my caliber rounds that only 48% damage instead of the 70 I believe it was with the sniper I'm not sure so don't quote me on that now let's test out the rifle so in proning stance the rifle shoots uh, at 0 0.92 40% accuracy oh please go away I don't want you to ruin my tutorial okay so that's in regards to the 
torso. And, uh, enemies present. An encounter is imminent. It's pretty damn close. And if I put on the actual... Uh, what do you call it? Actually, I could take him out with a, with a silencer. And... Uh, this gun doesn't support a silencer, unfortunately. Shotgun also doesn't support a silencer. So, hold on. Anybody has a knife? MD. Okay, he's off. I was gonna chase him with an axe. Good, so I can continue now. So now, back to uh -huh. Reaper. With the rifle, obviously he's less accurate, he's likely to hit, and he's unlikely to hit. So, if we put on the scope, He's gonna be a uh, high chance to hit, and likely to hit. And it doesn't jump around as much shit, he started to move. Okay, we don't have a stationary target, that sort of sucks. Okay, now, of course, if we make him stand up... Hold on, he's standing now. Excellent time to test it. He's unlikely to hit if he's in the running stance, in the chest, or in the head. And if you make him crouch, crouch... He is likely to hit. He's more accurate when he's crouching slightly and when he's with the rifle. And of course, he's the most accurate if he prawns. He's lying down. Uh, again, you can improve the accuracy, making it a much higher chance or certain to hit in regards to putting on the scope, being the 12x scope or the 4x scope. The 12x scope gives substantially more, so I might even get uh, certain to hit with the 12x scope. He's no with the 12x scope. He's not still getting certain to hit. But he's high chance to hit, so if I switch it now to the 4x scope. Uh, let him switch it. He switched. No, not yet. Did he switch? Yes, it's no more on the bar. So it's still a high chance to hit and likely to hit even with the 4x scope instead of the 12x scope. Let's uh, test out another thing in regards to how to use your weapons the best way. Again, I'm in the proton stance. I have my beautiful G82 sniper rifle. And you have to also keep in mind that each rifle has its own distance. So you might improve it with the actual scope and stuff, but you also have to consider that the rifle itself, for example, this one has range 110. <coughs> Maybe the best way, let's do it with, them, with their uh, assault rifle, not the sniper, sorry. So the range of this one is 49 meters, so if we move on him, you see that it's still green. The whole line is green itself. Now, why don't we move back? Very well. Cut. I'm out of breath. Give me a He's second. Overweight. So let's ditch uh, the toolkits. Got it. I hear you. Okay, let's move him there. Again on the prone stance. We moved him back a few meters. And uh, now we can't spot. Another land. Hold on. We need what next? somebody to be able Enemy. to spot the actual person. There we go. Clear. Now we'll go back yes. to Reaper. And as you can see, it's still, it's like turning out to be more yellowish, not greenish at the end. And it's still likely to hit. Okay, so let's move back even more. Roger that. We got hostiles in the vicinity. Not to worry. When I see him, I will kill him. Okay. And now from here, we will go down. And it is now nearly, it's sometimes moving to unlikely to hit. Enemy! If we pause it, it's as you can see, the line is still brown. If we check what he has, he just has the actual gun itself. Now, obviously, it's unlikely to hit because it's uh, now it's unlikely to hit because you see it's in the brown, uh, brown area of the line. So, to be likely to hit or a higher chance to hit, preferably in the green, which is somewhere in the beginning. Hold on, if we target him, you can see the green area is somewhere only here. And uh, if we take, for example, MD, he has, of course, certain to hit in regards to the torso. Nicely bright green line. This is by default. Hold on, let's remove even the holographic scope that reduces only time and doesn't affect accuracy. As you see, it's still certain to hit. Now, on his, he takes 1.2 seconds. So when I put the holographic scope on, he will take 0.77. That is a decent, decent uh, amount of time cutting in regards to shooting uh, the ammo out. Yeah. Now, Reaper, with his rifle, 
is unlikely to hit in regards to shooting the torso from that distance but if we put on the scope he is now likely to hit so you can say that the scope being the 4x or the 12x scope improves the actual accuracy overall so if you're using a shotgun and you're using it for some odd reason or actually let's consider this a machine gun and you're starting to use it more on a longer distance uh, longer range medium long range usually the machine gun is made for uh, you can say medium more prone towards close range combat but in case you want to use it slightly further away you can stick on a scope and you can get away with shooting further away and being more likely to hit now you have to consider that the further away you are it doesn't mean you're going to make more damage so as you can see here it says 15 percent because the distance of the bullet slows it down, so I don't really make that much damage. It says 15% damage. Now, if we get him up and move forward, let's just wait for this patrol to go. I don't want him to mess up my whole tutorial. So 15% damage from this distance. You know, even if it's more likely to hit, because of the scope, he's more likely to hit. You know, that doesn't mean it's always better. You know, even if you're like a mile away and you're shooting what from like a, an assault rifle or even a cheaper, let's say, a very poorer or not very poor or cheaper or lower caliber gun you know don't expect to make a lot of damage there's no point in shooting him from so far if i'm gonna like uh, throw at him or a stick or a rock from the looks of it you know 15 percent of damage it's like i gotta be hell of a lot very lucky to make anything above i don't know to see a mark of 10 15 damage come out of him if i hit him i believe i'll make maybe three four damage or something you know now if we move him closer very well it was 15 damage Got from it. that distance. Got it. If we move him back to our standard distance, and then we we prone him. Let's check out the damage now. We're at 45% damage. <coughs> so you gotta count that the further away you are, it'll also affect the expected damage. So you have to consider this. You know, uh, being closer is always better. You get more damage, but of course you're highly more highly likely to be spotted. Being further away, you're less likely to be spotted, but your expected damage is less. Even though you might put on an attachment such as a 4x or a 12x scope that improves your expected chance to hit, like likely to hit or certain to hit or a high chance to hit, it doesn't really affect the amount of damage you make. <coughs> it doesn't really change the amount of damage you make. So, for example, I'm far off and I have high chance to hit. It's sort of pointless if my uh, expected damage is 10%. You know, I don't know. The only reason I'd probably do that is just maybe to, to lure them in. So I'd shoot him from far, hit him, maybe make, I don't know, 5 to 10 damage when, uh, with a hit, maybe 2 to 3, more likely. And he'd charge towards me, and then I'll take him out with a closer range, guys, in regards to this. So this is also a good thing to keep in mind is the actual line itself, the standard line. Each gun has, of course, a distance, so if you're within the range or the green line you could say it's uh, likely to hit or high chance to hit by default without a scope hold on let's remove the scope now it shouldn't be that green yes as you can see it yellows out now at the end it's not that solid green so when it sort of yellows out you can see from here till here it sort of starts to yellow out you're likely to hit and the solid green color at the back here it is certain to hit okay uh, this is by default by the weapon so you got to keep that into consideration as well uh, I believe I covered everything in regards to using your weapons and attachments and stuff. And uh, if you have any other questions or I might have missed out on something, let me know. Again, this is my opinion on how to use the weapons the best. I'm sure somebody else might have another opinion or another better way of using them, but this is how I use them. So I do hope that helped you out. And of course, one last thing, make sure that you're using the appropriate calibers. So there's no point in using a crappy gun throughout the game, which is a 9mm caliber and stuff, because when you shoot the enemy later on, you'll realize that you're not making any damage. That's because the fact that your caliber is so shit and they're armored up so heavy that you're just hitting their armor. So it's doing maybe 3-4 damage. So at the end of the day, if you're having an issue wire not making a lot of damage, that because maybe you advanced too much and you have not upgraded your weapons and ammunitions or calibers to the point that it actually pierces the armor and gets to them a good way to figure this out again is to go to my guide and take a look there and there i have a list in the weapons tablet it shows you the piercing or armor damage uh, types of weapons that do in relation to caliber the g82 i believe has the highest armor piercing rate of 0.5 if i'm not mistaken i might be mistaken again so don't quote me on that uh i hope i wasn't going a little bit too fast i wanted to get as much covered as possible um I think this is it in regards to using ammo and stuff. Uh, the law, in my experience, sort of sucks because even if you target an enemy, it doesn't actually blow up on him. It crosses, it goes through everything and only hits when there's an actual 
object or a wall that blocks it otherwise if you're targeting an enemy it just goes through them yes it makes damage as it goes through them but it doesn't detonate at them so even if i target the ground it doesn't really detonate on the ground we can actually try that out uh, with the rockets uh, manual fire hold on a second there we go i'll target her or yeah i'll target i'll target this guy as you see uh, high certain to hit fine, fine, so i'll target moving. him here it comes. Haven't killed them all yet. Yes, it actually worked for some odd damn reason. Reload. Okay, I don't know, last time I targeted it, it just went through the person. So I guess it depends on the actual mood of the damn game itself. Okay, he's gonna heal in the middle of it. Fine, so we'll target your store. So again, as you can see, aim, uh, time to aim, 3.2 seconds. If I want it quicker, I can get... Uh, Hold on a second, let's go back to Meltdown, see what she has. She has no attachments on. I can cancel that. I can get Reaper to get up. Quickly run there, since he's healing, I have plenty of time to deal with all that stuff. Okay, now we're close and close range. So then I'm going to give the holographic attachment to Meltdown to increase the amount of time, and to decrease the amount of time it takes to shoot the damn thing. I think it was 3.2 Say, Oh, you can't stick attachments to the law, so never mind that. So now we will just fire the law to the guy behind him Fair that's healing him. It should effort. area damage should be able to take them both out. Hopefully, let's see if it hits. Here we go. And bingo. Two down. So for yeah, some odd reason, the actual rocket works in this case. I tried it in the... What do you call it? In the Red Dawn and... Uh, no, no, not Red Dawn. What am I saying? Fine, I tried fine, it in I'll the Shades it. of Red and it just went through the people. So I was a little bit uh, disappointed in regards to that. So let's see what happens. Yes, see, that's what I meant. It just flies through. So I'm not considered if that's considered as a miss or not, but uh, it might be considered as a miss. I remember last time it flew them. It flew through them, and it made damage anyways. In this case, it flew through him. I think the the exhaust should, or the, the actual fire from the rocket, or even if it flies past you, it should hit you. So. Okay. You can actually see the rocket, it's quite cool. There it is. You can actually see it. Yeah, bingo. Well, uh, and in regards to this, you also noticed that it seems that I can't put. Uh, oh, what's up with it? Not that she's going on a rocket frenzy. So, in regards to this, you can also tell that some weapons you can't put on attachments, such as law, I believe grenade launcher as well, and some weapons you can't put on silencers, for example, you can't stick a silencer on an assault rifle. Well, this is it in regards to everything you need to know uh, for the uh, aiming, shooting, weapons and attachments and stuff. In general, what I would say is uh, that you could use uh, the attachments in various circumstances, it depends. What I would also recommend if you have an in-game mercenary that you hire, they usually suck. For example, Ira is the first one that you get. You could uh, tend to give her the scope. If you have uh, your main tank using the scope, give the scope to Ira since she sucks anyways in using a gun and she can also provide backup fire and increase her accuracy and uh, range using the weapon. So give her the scope and give your main tank instead of that a uh, holographic uh, sight. So in both cases, he is a good shot, so why not reduce his time? It takes to fire uh, the bullets and improve the rate of fire he has and shoot more in uh, a, l a lesser time. So like that, in a way, you improve uh, the shittier Merc that can fac actually finally be able to shoot something since her accuracy is shit and her marksmanship is so low and on the other hand you can improve uh, the firing rate of your main tank you know it can be used in various circumstances as well for example if you have wolf and wolf is a shotgun expert you know obviously you don't want to give a shotgun expert a scope there's no point in shooting the shotgun at a further distance because even if you shoot somebody far away you'll notice the damage is very minimal so the best thing to do obviously would be give to give holographic sight to wolf or the reflex sight to wolf instead of the scope and give the actual scope to somebody who actually uses it for example as rifle guns or machine guns or not even machine guns machine guns i'd still stick with the scope and holographic sight you know you could give the scope to uh, rifles and snipers 
you know, indoor fighting stick always with the reflex sight and the holographic sight. I believe if you give a wolf the holographic reflex sight and shotgun, the close to the close hand-to-hand uh, -hand combat or close combat is then a joke. Because then you just rush him, shoot the living hell out of them with the holographic sight. You even reduce the time to shoot substantially more. And I believe in the running stance, the time to shoot with the shotgun is really minimal. It's like 0.3 seconds, 0 0.34, 0 0.2 seconds. So you're going to be shooting off those bullets so quick, it's unbelievable. Just make sure if you're rushing him with the shotgun run as close as possible because when you're running the accuracy isn't high and if you stay on the running stance it's not high so you can either run up close and shoot away aim for the head always to make the maximum amount of damage or what you could do is run up pause it or uh, pause it you know space bar it right click as close as possible like if you centimeters away from him like you you move a few centimeters away from him you stop like i don't know five centimeters away from him or in, in the game obviously you stop like I don't know, two two meters, three meters away from him. You, then uh, you're in the pause mode. Then you tell him to crouch. When he crouches, it's more accurate and it takes less time. If you make prawn, it takes too much time and you'll probably get shot by then. So you can crouch so it's more accurate. And then you tell him shift and right click the shoot to kill till he's dead. So you can do that as well. You know, I think this should give you sort of general idea in how to use your scopes and stuff. Um, uh, that's about it. As always, happy gaming. And see you again in my next vid. Of course, if you'd like to ask me any questions, just comment down below. And I'll hope to get back to you. Take care.